and welcome to this week's show, and it's a big one. It's one that uh, has been asked for by many hundreds of you who have uh, voted on Twitter for the movie to be covered this week. It is Who Dares Wins from 1982 and stars the late Lewis Collins as a captain in the SAS who infiltrates uh, a terrorist organization called the People's Lobby. Their plan is to set off a nuclear explosion at the Holy Lock submarine base in the cause for peace. That's their plan. It is to be stopped by the SAS. There are a number of fantastic action pieces throughout the picture. And let's start at the beginning. So, here is Andy Bradford. He is the first unfortunate victim. He has been sent to the other side of the demonstration. Get a bit more noise. In the window, of course is a sniper with a crossbow, William Tell, in the window. And uh, Andy gets one right in the kisser. Look at that. Oh, what a way to go. Great start, though. Um, kind of a, a way for, to, to see how things go on. This is uh, the ferry boat sequence. Uh, Martin Grace, of course, doubling Lewis for majority of the picture. Tricky one, this, because that boat can't really turn around and go back to position two again. He's got to try and nail it on the first attempt. It's not the biggest jump. But it's something that Lewis Collins doesn't need to do. And uh, Martin picks his spot and lands perfectly, covering himself from the camera position and gets on board. All good. Um, and again, another exercise here of, of, of just proving the amount of work that the SAS themselves put into this, uh, into this production. Um, General Peter Sibiliere. Um, who was the uh, the man in charge of the SAS at the time, gave the movie a, a huge amount of cooperation. All the helicopters are theirs, the, uh, all the equipment is theirs, and there's the actors close up, and then they cut away to um, SAS members doing the training exercise for real. So they, they managed to intertwine a great deal of the footage. This is the first major fight um, in the picture, and Lewis and Frankie coming back to her flat to be confronted by the two gentlemen we just saw abseiling from the helicopter after a bit of a fracas on the Welsh mountains at the start. Good set designed by Sid Kane here, plenty of room. And uh, the fight starts, it's a rope round the neck, it's two against one. Uh, Lewis again is doubled by uh, Martin Grace. Uh, for majority of it, um, there will be a moment when we will see that he is doubled by Rocky Taylor in a second. Um, Terry Forrestal, just there, has now doubled the other actor just to take hold of that rope and throw Martin through that initial table. This is the first part where Rocky falls through the table. They've split it. I don't know why, but Rocky remembers going through that table there. That's the glass top coffee table. Out onto the floor. Again, this is Lewis here. And then they swap and cross the room and through the smaller coffee table. It's very clever. Look at that. Gets his hands in the right position. That's Martin throwing himself down on there. And uh, it's very well worked out. Again, this uh, this rope means that he is being thrown around the room and is receiving uh, what uh, your man on the phone says. Oh, he'd like to thank you, sir, for a really gorgeous kick in the bollocks. He's welcome, said uh, his commanding officer. And he is getting it full on. Ooh, there's the final blow. And they drop the rope and... Uh, wander off after leveling up the score as far as they're concerned yes exactly now the union chapel which is where the concert took place and now the speeches are taking place um, just sitting the other side of that gentleman there which we'll spot in a second here um, is a stuntman tip tipping just behind him uh, is uh, stuntman Nick Wilkinson. Enough, enough. There, right, so he stands up. Tip 
is just about to get up onto his feet there. And then it kicks off. There's Tip laying down the riot act. It's got way too out of control now, and they're all off. Particularly in that end of the room. Um, so they're all trying to sort out what's going on. Everybody's in this full on, I must admit. There's, there's bodies about all over the place. Not that many stuntmen in there. Here's a couple, Greg Powell and over the balcony, again, Martin Grace, who's earning every penny of his fee on this picture. Um, so Greg's got half a dozen people around him. Martin gets back up to have another go at him and then gets head-butted. Whack, have that. And he drops now down. Greg just makes sure he's landed properly. Yep, jolly good. Right, come on, crack on. And on they go. Here, Joe Powell. Joe Powell um, and Nick Hobbs. Just about to get that in the face as well. But Joe Powell is a um, was referred to as the daddy of the uh, the stunt business, particularly in Britain. And here, sadly, is his demise. He gets oh, and then a knee to the face where he spits out a blood squib. Look at that. Oh, dear. Um, Lewis decides to get the girl out of the way. It's all getting a bit frantic. There's bodies about all over the place. Trying to get to safety. And again, there's this is organised ruckus going on here. It's been worked out. Crowds of people. Yep, yeah, you have a fight here. You fight amongst you. There's a couple of stump people thrown in for good measure. The police turn up. This is Graham Crowther as a policeman. Just behind him is Tim Condren. Uh, Tip Tipping is in a red hat who's just about to attack. Uh, there he is on the right of shot there. He's in the white jumper with a red hat. He's got Graham. And gives him a boot to the face. God, dear, there's a lot of there's a lot of blood squibs going on in this picture. Now it's time to catch a bus uh, from Trafalgar Square, and uh, Lewis about to get on the bus realizes that he's being followed by Mark Ryan. Jumps on and sits down. Mark now has to uh, fair old bit of sprinting going on here to catch that. Seventy three gets on board. Lewis sits tight, waits till he's upstairs. Right, he's gone. Now, anybody who's ever tried to get off a moving bus will know how complicated this is. This is, again, is Martin. And it only takes the slightest thing to trip or and you'd have fallen over, but he's got to try and whoop, stay out of the way of everything. And then uh, Lewis comes around the corner. Lewis can really shift, can't he? Look at him go. Very agile. Oh, straight through the gap on the bus. And sadly, Ingrid Pitt gets on behind. Look. Good stuff. Now, we've moved on to the horses. And uh, Dorothy Ford and uh, Del Baker. Uh, the two actors, of course, on horseback. The bus is coming. They get the signal. Here's the bus coming around the corner. And Del now takes over for the um, tricky part. Coming out in front of the bus, there's Del. Horse rears up, moves across. There's Dorothy just coming into position. There's a little area just there where she's going to land. There she is. Slides down the back of the saddle and off uh, onto the floor. Uh, there, the young lady there, is Denise Ryan, stunt woman Denise Ryan. And at the doorway, far left-hand side, Stuart St. Paul. Um, they're on board because they're going to take an active role in this in just a second. So they've taken over the bus. This, of course, is the band that's going to play at the embassy. They drive off the road a bit windy, and they're all being held at gunpoint. It's all a bit fraught, and they turn the corner a bit sharpish. People fall over. There's a Somebody goes for a gun. There's a burst of gunfire. Stuart gets his. There he goes. Little blood squib on his back. And then another burst of gunfire, and Denise gets hers. What a way to go. The choppers, of course, coming in for the raid, and this is all SAS. You know, they've provided all of the equipment, and they've provided 2-2 two, two Regiment, I believe, are the guys that are doing all of this. And this is purely on the basis that they have seen the rehearsals. They've seen the rehearsals with the stunt guys who were doing this, and because it is an exercise, and because it is a, a way of promoting uh, the SAS, they then decided, no, no, we'll do it ourselves. And that's what they did. Um, and there was a lot of flack over it, I believe, uh, towards the, uh, the end of 1982. 
Um, coming in here, now Martin Grace says that he was hanging from every helicopter, and my understanding is that Terry Forrestal was hanging with him uh, on this particular shot. This is not SAS, this is stunt guys. Uh, so that's my understanding of the shot here. This is Lewis being fabulous. Burst of gunfire. Physically, look at that, great roll. Bang! And then the two boys come in through the top window. And two terrorists dead, fantastic. Um, quite right too. And Lewis is away. Um, and the rest of the assault is again predominantly uh, SAS units, but there are moments like this. This is pure Hollywood. This wasn't in the plot, but this was from a story that one of the SAS guys had told um, the producers, and they wrote it into the story. That was Terry Forrestal getting set ablaze there by the um, the curtains and the guys getting breaching. Now, here's a, here's a great moment for uh, one of the actors. One of the actors here is Tony Osboa, you will remember from Porridge and Dempsey and Makepeace. Uh, and he's doing this himself. Comes out, bang, burst of gunfire, and through the door. Look at that. Fantastic. There's no ratchet involved there. That's him simply falling backwards, but doing a cracking job. Uh, and this is the sequence where Skellen catches up with Rod, who is trying to kill Richard Widmark, who is, of course, the American ambassador. And bang, burst of gunfire, and out he goes through the window. It's actually stuntman Terry Cade who is taking the fall. We'll look at it again. Um, that's John Dettin does the first part of it. And then it's a really awkward-looking fall as well. And I'm told uh, that he missed the bed, missed the landing bed on one occasion, rolled off. But it's a very nice fall. And then the rest of his team discover him. That's nice to be recognised. You OK? Yes, Tim, starving. Anyone seen a girl? No. Right, on me, boys. And they go off in search of Frankie. This is possibly one of the most iconic shots. They, there's a great deal of period where they almost sold the picture based on this. Look at this. The music pumping in the background and these boys. A great tracking shot. Look at that. It's terrific. Absolutely terrific. And then they find her, almost by accident. Out she comes. He freezes. And then gets a burst of gunfire, and it's stuntman Malcolm Weaver, who is ratcheted through the door, out the other side, and against the wall at the back. Prompting this line from Maurice. Slowing down a little, Peter. Come on, man, move your ass! Well, there you go. Good guys always win in the end. Next week, we visit Sydney, an explosive world of drugs and organised crime through the eyes of one man. That man is the man from Hong Kong. So until then, bye for now.